Hello and welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week. This week we have a proof, uh, we're trying to prove an if and only if statement uh, based on groups and subgroups. So if we have um, H, um, that's a subgroup of G, then A is an element of H if and only if A H, which is the left coset of H, is a subgroup of G. So, um, at the surface, it's a simple um, line of what we need to prove. But really, uh, the if and only if statement means that we have uh, two things to prove. So we have to prove if uh, A is an element of H, then AH is a subgroup of G. And we also have to prove that if AH is a subgroup of G, then A is an element of H. So. Um, I'm going to rewrite, uh, rewrite this problem into two subproblems. So the only thing we know is that H is a subgroup of G, meaning that it has all the properties of a subgroup. So uh, the identity is in H. Um, H has H is closed under um, whatever operation we're using in our group, which um, I guess, because here we have A times H, so we're using multiplication, I guess. Um, but yeah, H is closed, and also um, the inverses are in H. So, um, so first, we're going to prove um, this way. So if A is an element of H, then AH is a subgroup. Um, so here I have an outline of uh, this proof. So here's what we know. A is an element of H and H is a subgroup of G. And this is kind of what we, if we can prove these two things, uh, then uh, we can show that AH equals H, and since H is a subgroup of G, AH, which equals H, is also a subgroup of G. So, but we still need to prove these two things, which um, can be done fairly quickly. Um, so now we have um, we have two elements we know for a fact are in our group H, um, A, and H. Um, so that means by the closure of H that A, A inverse H is also in H. And H, of course, is just the identity multiplied on the left times H, which we can then rewrite as this uh, A times A inverse H. Um, and we break this up because we, we want A inverse H. So this is obviously an element of AH, meaning that um, H is a subgroup of AH. Uh, and since both of these are true, um, we can show, we can, uh, that implies directly that AH equals H. And since H is a subgroup of G, then AH is a subgroup of G. And, um, so, so yeah, so this, this way is kind of trivial if you, if you um, like, the first thing you read about cosets is that if A is an element of H, then AH is a subgroup uh, of G. But it's important to kind of go through and prove um, just given the properties of uh, subgroups. So now we're going to prove the backwards way. So, um, again, we have, uh, we don't have as clear of an outline because this is a little less trivial of proof, 
but we know that A, H is a subgroup of G, and H is a subgroup of G, and we want to prove that A is an element of H. So we know that for some H in H, A, H equals the identity, um, and that's because of uh, H being a subgroup of G. And we can multiply on the left side by A inverse. Um, so, so after we multiply by uh, A inverse on the left side, um, this here will cancel out, and this A inverse times the identity is just going to be A inverse. So we have H is equal to A inverse, and rem uh, remember that this is for some H in H. So since H is indeed a subgroup of G, uh, meaning that the uh, inverses are um, are contained in the group, then um, A is an element of H. So that proves our statement uh, completely, the if and the only if. So um, if you're interested in group theory, we do have a uh, group theory book on our store, which is a, a good read. It goes over some stuff. Uh, this is about cosets. So thank you for watching, and uh, stick around for um, links to our website, to a big playlist of problems of the week or to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, thanks again for watching and have a good day.